I thought the whole point was for me to just make fun of Josh while we were there. No? I have to work with him? Oh, I'm out. Welcome back to the Scale Builders Guild. Thanks again for watching. This is Road to Scale Nationals. And I'm really excited about this. Uh, I took a year off from comps all of last year, all of this, well, all of this year, all of 2019. I didn't go to a single competition. 2020, I'm gonna try to do a few more than I usually do. And we're starting off really big with the Scale Nationals. This is a very big competition and it's something that I'm really excited about. I'm really excited to not just be competing, but also emceeing the event with Josh from Harley Designs. Yes, imagine the two of us in person holding microphones. I'm sure that much comedy will ensue and that's definitely going to be a big part of the reason I'm going down to Las Vegas. The other part of course is to be competing. And if you're not familiar with the idea of scale crawling competitions, I invite you to go to the Sorka website. I'll be sure to put a link down below where you can check that out and get all of the details on how these sorts of competitions go down. They usually are broken up into three different classes. Class one is like a trail truck or a drive to the trailhead and drive your truck out kind of truck. Class two is a much more modified idea of that truck, something you'd see on the Rubicon Trail, for example. And class three is full on, full out crazy builds, uh, generally around a 2.2 inch tire size. The biggest challenge for Josh and I this year at the Scale Nationals, we're doing all three classes. Uh, so definitely out of my comfort zone on one of those. Class one and class two come quite naturally now. Uh, I've been doing this for a little while and I always have a really great time doing it. Win or lose, I don't think that's the important part. I think the important part is having fun. Always first and foremost for me. So uh, this is definitely going to be fun. You probably noticed behind you some trucks that could fit into those classes. So we're gonna go through and I'm gonna show you each and every one of the classes that I'll be working on, some tips and tricks, and uh, a bunch of general comedy. <laughs> I think is probably gonna be what this video series is all about. So why don't we dig right in and have some fun and see what I'm gonna be doing this year for class one. In the spirit of recycling and reusing, I won't be building three brand new trucks to compete with this year. I just don't have the time. I guarantee that I wouldn't get them done. I'd be racing up until the last minute and I wanna make sure that the trucks I am using, I have some experience with so I'm not going into a competition cold. It's best to have a truck that you're familiar with and know how its center of gravity reacts to certain things rather than jumping in with a truck you've never used before and just finished the night before. I oftentimes find that the more practice and the more time you have with a truck, the better you understand how it's going to react. And I'm also at a disadvantage because I'm on the other coast. So I'm going to have to ship all of these trucks out to the west coast in preparation of the event. So I have to be done at least two weeks before I actually fly out to guarantee that they're going to be there and in one piece when I get there. So with all of that in mind, I am reusing a class one truck that I've used in the past. This is my RC four wheel drive TF2 Marlin Crawler Edition. And this was an RTR truck when I bought it. It is very far from that now. Uh, <laughs> there's very few things that haven't been touched or modified on this truck to make it a lot more competition worthy. Let's go over the truck together. Uh, this Mojave body has already been pre-bobbed uh, and there has been a section removed from the underside of it to make it a much more competition ready uh, truck. From the factory, this truck doesn't have these cut doors. That's something that I've added to make it look much more like a Marlin crawler. It also takes a bit of weight out of the body. I've also replaced the, uh, the standard hard plastic window with a Lexan window that I had in, in, uh, in my parts bin. Uh, just to save a bit of weight. I've also completely changed out the interior. This is not the standard interior that comes with the TF2. Uh, this one actually is kind of built to um, be a little more Sorka point ready. Uh, it is a full bench seat. There is a driver from the knees up and uh, it's just a much lighter option than trying to use a full interior. Uh, and plus I wanted to make sure I still had room for a battery underneath the body. Uh, that's probably it for modifications on the body itself. Oh, there is a roll bar as well. This counts uh, uh, for some Sorka points. It's metal, uh, I braised that up myself. 
added some scale accessories in the back here. These are all hollow uh, uh, front runner cases from Knight Customs, so they're nice and light. There's a spare tire there as well. Yes, it doesn't match the tires I'm using, but it doesn't have to, as long as it's within the same outer diameter as the tires I'm using. This propane tank is actually a PowerShift RC uh, kill switch. Uh, I find that when I'm comping, I like to just keep the body and the battery and everything in place. This is the way to cut the power and uh, nice little added scale detail and gives you a few scale points as well. I'm using sliders from Scalar Fab. These are raw metal. Uh, I like leaving them raw because I, I like to get them rusty and I think it adds to the look of the truck overall and also just kind of fits with the theme of this used and abused Toyota that I'm doing. I'm also using Scalar Fab's rear bumper as well. Uh, it's nice and tight to the body and uh, does a really good job of bumping. Moving on to the chassis itself, uh, this is a pretty heavily modified TF2. It is still a leaf sprung truck, so I'm gaining a ton of scale points there. I know Josh is uh, leaf spring averse, so he's probably not going to be doing anything with leaf springs, uh, which is hilarious because he's running a Forerunner body, and last time I checked, those were in their first year leaf sprung on all four corners. But hey, I'm not the scale police. You do whatever you think is right, Josh, even though it's wrong. Uh, currently, I am using the stock Marlin uh, front metal bumper. There are a lot of skill points for using metal over plastic, uh, so I definitely wanted to get a few extra points there. It does affect its approach angle dramatically, so I am going to be looking at tucking that in, trimming this, or maybe getting rid of it entirely and trying something else to increase that approach angle, because I do know that uh, in a lot of these competitions, that approach angle does come into play and can mean the difference between a few reverses and no reverses. Now that we've got the top off, you can see how little TF2 is actually still remaining on this truck in its stock form anyway. I have done the motor clock, so this motor now sits as low as possible on the chassis without interfering with any of the uh, leafs or axle. Still get full articulation in the front there, but that motor sits so low it's really only helping its center of gravity. Uh, servo is in its stock location, but I am running a S6390 brushless servo from Spectrum. This is a nice high torque, uh, high voltage servo, and uh, definitely should be more than enough power to uh, move this truck around. Uh, you will notice that these are no longer RC four wheel drive TF2 axles. I am running courtesy of JEC Racing. These are Vanquish Curry axles. And JEC Racing makes this great brass adapter so you can run leaf springs on the truck and have them sit perfectly under a TF2. This is a great way to add a lot of strength to this drivetrain because as stock, those axles won't handle a ton of abuse. I did want to maintain its leaf sprung nature. Uh, it does really help out with scale points and makes it, uh, in my opinion, a bigger challenge. It's a lot more fun in my opinion this way, especially when you can beat people with leaf springs. Josh. One of the major disadvantages of the TF2 transmission is that it does not offer overdrive in its stock form. With the help of AM Garage, and I'll be sure to put a link down below for this one, there is a transfer case flip mod that is available uh, using all of AM Garage's pieces to flip that transfer case so you can get a very aggressive overdrive to the front axle. I'm pretty sure Bert told me that it offers a 40% overdrive, which is absolutely crazy. That is motor melting overdrive. And with that in mind, you do have to be very careful when you use this overdrive system because you can and will melt motors if you try to treat this as a trail truck. Running it through 10 gates, minding your speed, making sure you're not getting bound up. It does require a little more effort on the part of the driver, but all of that overdrive is so worth it in a competition setting. You really want to use as much overdrive as possible so you can really help pull yourself up over an obstacle and increase that steering angle on a truck that will definitely need as much help as it can get. I'm currently running a Tekken 35 turn heavy duty brushed motor paired with a Holmes Hobbies Torque Master BRXL brushed ESC. I probably will before March change this to a brushless setup, probably somewhere in the 1900 to 2300 kV range just to get myself a little protection from all that motor melting. That overdrive is so aggressive, and if you're not careful, you will explode motors. Uh, I have seen it happen. Trust me, it's a thing. I've also rerouted the rear shocks, and of course, because this is a leaf spring truck, these shocks are really only here for uh, stability. They're not really uh, 
going to offer much rebound. All of that springiness is coming from the Leafs themselves. So it's mainly just cosmetic, uh, but uh, it's good to have them. And for an additional scale point, there is an exhaust on the truck as well. Just nice to add that little bit. Part and parcel with that transfer case flip to give you overdrive, you're also raising that whole transfer case up. So it is very much tucked out of the way. Uh, Burt offers this great metal plate underneath um, that also smooths out the whole belly, especially in conjunction with these Scalar Fab sliders. So it is really nice and smooth underneath. You'll note that I'm still using plastic drive shafts. These wild boar drive shafts have taken a ton of abuse and uh, I don't really see much reason to change them if I'm honest. I'll be running Proline's 4.19 size Hyrax. This is a great tire. Uh, it's a great class one tire. Uh, it's just killer. I love the small uh, size of it. Uh, I think I'm running the stock foams or they may actually be little Nova's. I'm not entirely sure. I can't remember. I'll have to open them up and check them out. These uh, trail runner rings are from Locked Up RC. Uh, along with the scale hardware. I just think it really sets off this incision plastic beadlock. I really do like the scale accuracy and the details, and I tend to spend a lot more time on that than I do the performance. Uh, but this is a nice blend, I think, of the two. And uh, carrying forward into class two, I think we'll see a trend developing. So without having to do very much, I'm already done and ready with class one. On to class two. Class 2 is typically one of the more competitive classes in Sorka events, and in most cases, most of the builds I've done for Class 2 have definitely been looks first and performance second. I once ran a full resin 13 pound Range Rover Classic. I've also run a Proline SR5 SCX10 2, and that was a much more competitive truck, but still focused more on the looks than it did on the performance. I've even run Toyota FJ80 bodies. And yes, I will be running another FJ80 body this time around, but I'm not falling into the same trap. I am definitely going performance first, looks second, as evidenced by this abomination. <laughs> this started out as a FJ80 hard body. Uh, it's barely an FJ80 anymore. Now it's more of a pickup, I guess. I did chop the roof. Uh, I did pinch the nose, and there are a ton of modifications still to come. I did want to share with you how I did this nose pinch. It's not very difficult, and it's something that uh, if you are looking to get into competition, it's something, and if you want to keep a hard body uh, for those extra scale points, then you might want to consider doing something like this in class two, just to improve performance. There are very strict guidelines you must follow to make sure that this is a legal modification. For me, it was a... Uh, it was definitely uh, about adding performance, but also making this a very unique looking truck. Uh, FJ80 Land Cruisers are already pretty amazing looking, but I wanted to kind of keep most of that look intact, but make it something entirely different. I have seen a full size example of this and it's what I'm modeling mine after, uh, but this is not a very common mod for this truck. Most people would just buy a pickup truck, I think. The pinch uh, is fairly easy. Uh, all you have to do is kind of decide how extreme of an angle you want to make. Uh, trim the pieces. I did some measuring first. I taped everything out. Uh, and then I got out my uh, flexible saw blade. Made some cuts and uh, ended up with what you see here. I did use uh, my heat gun to heat the sides of each fender so they would uh, kind of bend in perfectly to match the contour. Uh, and it obviously helps hold the truck together if these are already kind of in the position they need to be after being melted and heated in the right way. Uh, one thing to note on the pinch, you'll see that I did create an, an added step for myself. I went in and I did the pinch and then I decided that I wanted to go back and make a more aggressive pinch and I did it wrong and actually trimmed off the wrong pieces of the hood and I made, the, made it so the angles would never match. So I actually found those scraps that I actually cut off the hood, glued them back on, put it all back together and uh, recut the angles. So uh, it was a lot of extra steps, but it just goes to show you that I am human. <laughs> I am capable of making mistakes um, and not afraid to admit it either. So uh, that's uh, something that I kind of regret doing and I'll use some of the slurry to fill those gaps in and smooth it all out afterwards. This does offer a huge performance advantage and it's something I would definitely recommend. Oh, uh, to make sure the grill was still going to look right, I did section it so it would maintain its original look. Just, you know, for the casual observer, they could look at it and say, yeah, it's still a Land Cruiser, 
but there's something different about it. I will be bobbing the rear of the truck as well at some point. Uh, I just haven't gotten around to it yet. There's a lot of other modifications to make still. And the biggest one, of course, is trying to uh, reuse the rear portion of the, of the, uh, the SUV style to give it a more finished look on the cab. Uh, and uh, it's okay so far. I have kind of temporarily glued everything together and I'm using a technique that I've learned from Pardon My Noob. This is to help make a nice rigid connection and basically mold it from two pieces back into one. I'm using a styrene slurry that I made from styrene scraps that I had in my styrene scrap bin and some MEK substitute. I let everything dissolve overnight in a uh, mason jar and then I use a small plastic syringe to uh, add this slurry back into the gaps and rather than use a bondo or a gap filling sort of a compound or even a two-part epoxy this creates a chemical bond between the slurry and the styrene because it's all styrene eventually uh, and this just makes a much easier way to put pieces back together that are styrene uh, once that's complete, that's going to be all sanded down. I also kept a little bit of a sunroof to also keep the weight down. And I'm using as thin pieces of styrene as I would, uh, you know, comfortably use to help join all these pieces back together. Once that's done, I will complete the bed. Uh, there will be fenders. Uh, I may actually use a uh, Toyota Hilux bed uh, kit from Pardon My Noob as well, which is light and styrene, and it should go in there pretty easily once I bob off the end of this bed. Uh, the fenders will also be getting a pretty aggressive trim. I wanna make sure that I'm not binding up those tires in any extreme steering or uh, off camber or anything that might prevent me from getting over an obstacle. I wanna make sure those are completely cleaned out. And uh, that's it. Uh, that's where I'm at with this truck for now. It is sitting on a Vanquish BS410 Pro chassis. Uh, I figured, you know, that's a really great chassis to start with. I am also like Josh, I don't like using a flat rail chassis. I like using C-channel rail when, where possible. And uh, I, you know what, I want it to look and function like a truck. Uh, and I know the VS410 platform very well now. And I think that this was a great truck to go with. Um, yeah, it probably, uh, I will end up losing that uh, scale designs by Mr. Comedy motor cover uh, just to save the weight. I uh, definitely want this to be as lightweight as possible. I may also looking at increasing the wheelbase ever so slightly in the rear just to give myself a little bit of a competitive advantage. 12.3 uh, is good, 12.5 uh, might be even better. The motor sits so low in the chassis, uh, very high clearance uh, chassis rail design and uh, just a slew of great technology and a nice solid platform. Uh, we will probably be increasing that uh, now that there is a overdrive kit available from Vanquish to make it an even more aggressive overdrive. Currently it's got a 1900 kV uh, Castle Slate motor with a Mamba X ESC. Probably keep that motor, but I will be running it on 4S. Uh, most of the plastic bumpers and sliders will also be replaced with metal. I'm gonna fabricate all of that stuff myself probably do an interior cage as well to get myself a few extra scale points but i am going to keep the interior lexan i don't want to add any more weight than i need to uh, the vs4 pro is already a pretty hefty chassis and uh, i want to try to keep performance over looks and i think you'll agree that this is not a good looking truck right now so i think performance is already taking a front seat so that's where class 2 is sitting uh, lots of days left Lots more to do on this truck, but I think we're in good shape already. And finally, class three. Uh, the class I have the absolute least experience with. I think I've run it once and uh, I did not do well. Uh, that said, I am going a little bit out of the box again. This wouldn't be me if I was doing something that everyone expected. So I'm taking my Vanquish Ripper and porting it over to 2.2s. And you're probably saying to yourself, you are an absolute madman. Uh, there's no way that this truck will do well in class three against purpose-built rigs. And you're probably right. But I did want to take something I already had in my collection and revamp it and give it some new life and give it, you know, really give it an opportunity to kind of do something a bit different with it. Uh, this already is an amazing looking truck. It points out uh, pretty high 
uh, in terms of the spec and the way it's been set up. With Vanquish announcing that they will be doing a Capra width portal axle very soon, I thought that the Ripper would be a great opportunity to put those new portal axles underneath and get some 2.2 wheels and tires on here. Um, so mechanically, the only thing that I'll be changing are the axles and the wheels and tires. Everything else is staying exactly the same. I'm not gonna change anything. It's already set up great. The dig works perfectly in all three positions and uh, it's got a super shafty bomb proof transmission in there. So this thing is ready to rock and roll. I will have to do some small housekeeping to make sure everything's up and running. Um, I don't even remember what motor is in here to be honest with you. Uh, what is it? 2850 KV uh, Castle Slate Mamba X um, save for the axle swap and wheels and tires, this truck is pretty much where I want it to be. Uh, I'm really curious to see how the portals will affect its center of gravity. It's a very heavy truck to begin with, but C3s tend to be kind of heavyweights if I'm honest. So yeah, that's where we stand with this one. I'm really looking forward to getting it out there. Sorka does have a ton of rules and regulations that you must follow to the letter if you want to compete at this level. They are very important and I suggest you spend a lot of time poring over the details of each and every class that you will be competing in if you choose to compete in a Sorka style event. So I think that's going to do it here for my intro on the road to the scale nationals. I am really looking forward to March. I think it's going to be a great time. Josh and I are really super excited to be emceeing the whole event. And uh, I'm going to put a link down below so you can check out all of the event uh, details. And if you're interested in maybe attending, competing, everything you'll need to know is on that Facebook page. Do you, why don't you put a comment down below and let me know what you're thinking. Uh, and if you've got any suggestions on how I can tune or if I can do something a bit different in classes two and three, and even one if you've got some good ideas there too, post them down below. You know I love to read through and answer as much feedback as I can. If you're enjoying this video, be sure to hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already and hit that notification bell so you get updates anytime there's a new video from the Scale Builders Guild. Stay tuned for a lot more on the road to the Scale Nationals. There will be a ton more content coming very soon. Thank you so much for watching. See you again soon.